What is going on guys? Welcome to Homecraft Cocktails. Cocktails you can make for the comfort of your home. My name is Briss and today we'll be going over not one, not two, but three different brunch cocktails that you can make at home. Now just to preface, I usually do very in-depth deep dives about each cocktail's history, but since I'll be going over three cocktails in one video, I'm going to keep it as summarized as possible. So first to kick things off, we're going to start with the most common, the most notable brunch cocktail there is. The mimosa. So the mimosa was actually based off of the Bucks Fizz drink. The Bucks Fizz was created back in 1921 by Malachi Pat McGarry, who was a bartender at Bucks Club in London, England. The Bucks Fizz will consist of two parts champagne to one part orange juice. The mimosa will be born four years later in 1925 by a bartender named Frank Meyer at the Ritz Hotel in Paris, France. Now, very similar to a Bucks Fizz, it's still champagne and orange juice. However, the difference is it's a one-to-one -one ratio or equal parts instead of the Bucks Fizz versus two champagne to one orange juice. So typically in a six ounce champagne flute like I have here, you would do just three ounces of champagne and three ounces of orange juice. However, I like my mimosas to be a little more potent than that as I'm sure a lot of you do as well. So today I'll actually be doing five ounces of champagne and one ounce of orange juice. And usually, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even be measuring this, but because we are crafting cocktails and being precise, I will actually measure out five ounces. But usually I just free pour it. And then after your champagne, you want to do an ounce of orange juice. Just enough to give it just a little a color of orange. That's all you want to do. And there you have a mimosa. For our next drink, we're going to do the French 75, which is kind of similar to mimosa, but much more robust and complex. The French 75 was created back in 1915 during World War I. It was originally called the Soissons Cans, which is French for 75. It was named after the very powerful World War I. World, 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 <laughs> Jesus. It was named after the powerful World War I French gun, which shares the exact same name, due to its very lethal nature as it contained not only champagne and gin, but also back then had 100 proof cognac to boot. There are quite a few different variations to this cocktail, including but not limited to absinthe, Angostura bitters, grenadine, and the list goes on and on. And then you also even have French 77s, French 95s, French 125s, Mexican 75s. It's, it gets pretty crazy, but your standard French 75 will always contain gin, lemon juice, simple syrup or sugar and champagne. So first we're going to add an ounce of gin to a shaker. And then we're going to do half of an ounce of lemon juice. After your lemon juice, then you want to add half of an ounce of simple syrup. Then you want to add ice to your shaker and then shake for 10 to 15 seconds. After that, then you want to strain into your champagne flute. Then you want to pour three ounces of champagne into the champagne flute. Finally, you'll want to garnish with a lemon twist. Let me just sharpen up the sides here. And there you have a French 75.
Finally, for drink number three, we have the Irish Coffee. The Irish Coffee was created back in the winter of 1943 by Joe Sheridan, who was a chef at Foynes Port, which is an airport near Limerick, Ireland. One day, during a cold wintry night, somewhat near Foynes Port, a flight has gotten turned around mid-flight, obviously much to the dismay of the passengers. So Joe empathetically whipped up a whole new cocktail to make everyone feel better using coffee, cream, sugar, and whiskey. All the passengers enjoy it right off rip, and one of them even asks, hey, is this Brazilian coffee? And then Joe responds, no, it's Irish coffee. And so that is how the cocktail got its name and where it came from. So first off, you're gonna start by filling your Irish coffee glass with hot water. The reason why you fill the glass up with hot water is because when you put the coffee in, you don't want the heat transfer from the coffee to the glass to make your drink get colder faster. So you'll fill it up with hot water and you'll just let it sit for about 30 seconds until you discard the water. And in the meantime, I've had a pot of coffee brewing behind me in the meantime. So after you dump your hot water out and you've warmed up your glass, you'll then want to pour three fourths of an ounce of simple syrup into your glass. Next, you want to follow that up with an ounce and a half of Irish whiskey. Uh, today, I'll be using Proper 12. This is uh, Irish whiskey that I've heard good things about. Um, it has notes of vanilla, honey, and toasted wood. And it's also owned by Conor McGregor as well. Who the fuck is that guy? Who the fuck is that? No damn well who I am. Who the fuck is that? I forgot to put a pour spout. Obviously, you don't need a pour spout, it just makes pouring so much easier, I promise. After your Irish whiskey, then you want to pour coffee almost right up to the top of your glass, leaving just enough room for the cream on top. Finally, you want to use the back of your bar spoon to layer some heavy cream right on top. And there you have an Irish coffee. So there we have all three brunch cocktails, guys. The mimosa, the French 75, and the Irish coffee. So now that we put all this hard work in, let's give these cocktails a taste. I'm gonna start off with the mimosa just because it is the most you know, basic, most common, the trademark brunch cocktail. The mimosa, you can just, you cannot go wrong with it. Um, well, the only way you can go wrong with it, rather, is if you just overpower it with orange juice. So then it tastes like orange juice with like a hint of alcohol. That is not the way you want to go. I would definitely suggest if you are going to do a mimosa, at least bare minimum do the one to one ratio like the recipe suggests. However, if you're one like me who wants it on the stronger side, you know, load it up with champagne, you know, fill it almost all the way to the top, like basically where it is right now. And then you just want to do a dash of orange juice to give it that nice color. That's it. The mimosa also does, I mean, it doesn't really need a garnish. Um, you can put an orange wheel, completely optional. When you're having bottomless mimosas at brunch, no one cares about garnishes. They're just trying to, you know, get five, 10, 15 mimosas as, as quickly as possible. So, you know, I never put garnishes in them, but you're more than welcome to if you wanted to make it look prettier. So next we'll have the French 75. Let's see what we're working with here. Yes, so like I said previously, the French 75 is like a more robust, more complex cousin to the mimosa. Still has that champagne in there, but it also gets boosted up with alcohol from the gin, and then it just gets added flavors from the lemon juice and the simple syrup. So if you want a fancier, better tasting mimosa, I would highly suggest trying out a French 75 if you haven't before. And like I said, there are other varieties as well, such as the French 95, the French 125, and the Mexican 95. The list goes on and on, it goes crazy, but the French 75 is a great, great step up from the mimosa. Also, with the lemon twist, 
it gives a, a nice aesthetic you know it, it doesn't have too much going on obviously um, but the lemon twist is almost like a, like a handkerchief if you will to support the drink it gives it a nice you know accessory to touch it up a bit and lastly let's try the Irish coffee gotta drink a little more to just get past the heavy cream layer oh man that's good I hope I don't have like a milk mustache or anything yes the Irish coffee is in my opinion a phenomenal cocktail it not only shines during brunch but also on like cold winter nights like when the cocktail was first invented many many years ago it provides just a warmth you know that you can't really get from a lot of cocktails because not a lot of cocktails are served hot it tastes good it's strong also the drink has a nice visual appeal to it I know I know I've drank it down some but just having that nice thin layer of cream on top definitely gives it uh, a sense of character and then you have this nice brown body with the glass obviously with this being Irish coffee glass it's specifically made and built for Irish coffees honestly it, it just helps give the drink much more of a visual aspect than if you would have put it in you know some other type of glass and yeah this drink just tastes so damn good sorry can't stop drinking it along with the heavy cream um, you can use whipped cream as a substitute and then also for an additional garnish you can use grated nutmeg as well I do not own nut nutmeg and I was not about to go out and purchase it However, it is a great addition just to, you know, sprinkle those little brown shavings on top. So there it is, guys. Three brunch cocktails. Part one, actually. I'll be doing part two for another set of three cocktails next week as well. So be on the lookout for that. At the end of the day, guys, thank you for watching this week's video. And I'll catch you next week for the next round. Peace.